Good uh, Thursday morning. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3, streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. This morning we are on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. My name is Colin Worthington. I'm going to introduce you to our guest here in just a second. I just want to uh, go back to, to yesterday's program. Got a lot of good feedback on that, and I appreciate uh, hearing that. Really just kind of pulled that out of my uh, back pocket um, you know, the last 15 minutes before the show, and I appreciate everybody tuning in and commenting on that. Um, since then, um, our good friend Jay Collins, who is a District 68 state representative this morning, he actually sent me something that was uh, – let, let me recap what we did talk about yesterday. We were talking about the, uh, quote, skullduggery over in uh, Villa Rica uh, this week and um, <clears throat> had to do with uh, bringing in a former mayor to be deputy city manager. Um, Jay Collins, again, District 68 state rep this morning, sent me the uh, municipal codes for the city of Villa Rica. And uh, Section 5 says, ineligibility of elected officials says, uh, except we're authorized by law, neither the mayor nor any council member shall hold any other elective or appointive office in the city or otherwise be employed by said government or agency thereof during the term for which she, he was elected. Now, that one, you know, it's interesting, it's important, but this is the one that we should pay attention to. No former mayor, no former council member shall hold any compensated appointed office in the city until one year after the expiration of the term for which he, she was uh, elected, for they served. Now, I did reach out to two city council people this morning, as well as uh, the, the media guy over at Villa Rica and city manager Tom Barber. I shared that, and I said, hey, it's a possibility I'm missing something. Maybe I didn't look deep enough into this code, but from what this looks like, it looks like um, it might be in violation of that. One of the city council people got back to me and said that we've had that conversation uh, with the city attorney, and uh, he says that the, these two were not connected. <clears throat> so I, I've reached out to the attorney, left him a voice message this morning, so perhaps I can get an explanation on it. And uh, if any of you get an explanation on it before that and can explain why those would not be connected, I'd appreciate that. But I do plan to do a story on it tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get uh, a comment. Anyway, my guest this morning has nothing to do with that. <laughs> and I apologize for wasting two minutes of your show with it. But uh, my guest this morning... His name is Shadarin Fanning, and he is uh, a candidate. He intends to qualify next month to run for sheriff in Douglas County. It's a seat currently held by uh, Tim Pounds, and kind enough to join us this morning. And it should be, I mean, I think it's an important conversation for Carroll County to hear, too. I mean, I'd, I'd like to talk about what kind of relationship you would, you know, do you think a relationship with Carroll County is important, too? We'll talk about that. But but uh, let's start out. Introduce yourself. Give us the who, what, where, when, why. you all the who's. Yeah. yeah my name is Shadarian Fanning. Um, I'm a 15-year vet. <laughs> Uh, with the uh, Atlanta Police Department, I'm a police commander currently there. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. Um, roll Tide, if you uh, if so your you dogs already, are not upset. No, I was say here, yeah, the West portion. I think you've already got you know 50 yeah. percent of people in your well, favor just with what kind of we got. You know, we got Kirby. He's he's kind of Alabama. Yeah, you know? I mean, you know, the, the 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 favor tends to lead whoever won the national championship the year yeah. before. You know, it's true. So he yeah. he might go back as the head coach, maybe. Yeah, he. <laughs> I, I want to see Nick Saban go back to, to West Virginia because if he can win there, I mean, he's from West Virginia. If he yeah. could win there, my yeah. gosh, I mean, he's already a legend. But if he could win there, national championship, that would solidify. I got a little distracted, but yeah, yeah. but from from Montgomery, Alabama. <clears throat> Um, I have a a four-year degree in criminal justice, Um, prior history with uh, uh, law enforcement. I was a plainclothes officer for a while in Zone 1, which is Bankhead area. Bankhead area, uh, if you've ever been through there, uh, reference point is like Cobb County 285 and... um, uh, Donnelly Hollowell. It's like yeah, it's like the first exit on two eighty five after you get off twenty, like first or second exit. Yep. Better yeah. So that's that's zone one as a reference point for you. Um shortly after that I went to the community oriented police unit called COPS, where I did uh mentorship and we did uh a lot of uh activities, um um uh, mentor mentorship activities as it pertains to the rec centers in uh in Atlanta. And I did that for a while, um, and they realized I was really good with kids, so I went over to the school detective section uh, with APS. Um, It was still through Atlanta, but we were on the uh, Atlanta public school side. Mm -hmm. So we uh, investigated crime there and also uh, implemented mentorship there in the schools. Um, Got really good with the uh, knowing who the gang members were. In all the schools, so end up going over to the gang unit shortly after that. 
um, where we were able to clean up a lot of our gang problems that were leaving from neighborhoods into the school. Mm. I mean, I think up until maybe five, six years ago, just a lot of people in our community, when our police would talk about gangs and stuff, and they were surprised to hear that we have them in our community and have them in our schools you know, yeah. here in West Georgia. But it, it's yeah. out there. It's prevalent. I mean, it's... Well, they, they're they uh, hybrid gangs. So a lot of people, don't, they don't understand the difference between, like, you know, uh, neighborhood and understanding the difference between, like, traditional gangs. So hybrid gangs are pretty much... You know, maybe someone in the neighborhood or maybe someone in the school created, you know, a clique to, you know, establish the same meanings and definitions that, uh, you know, that suffice to be a uh, traditional gang. But hybrid gangs are actually more dangerous because they have more to prove. And it's, I mean, I've heard somebody call them wannabe gangs too, and that they, yeah. and they are more now dangerous. They have to, yeah. Now they have to show you they're not a wannabe gang, so yeah. they're actually more dangerous. That's scary. Well, tell us, I mean, you got this experience, 15 years experience. Why, why was now time? I mean, I guess if you always wanted to be sheriff, and, and why is now the time that you, you, know, you think you're ready to step into that role? So my uncle mm-hmm. retired from sheriff sheriff office in Alabama, so uh, so did my dad. Um, so being around the, the whole, like um, – um, sheriff family, and then I'm part of the Georgia Sheriff's Association as well, and I'm also deputized with uh, Fulton County. So um, always been in that little ring of uh, uh, working closely with the sheriff's office. Um, um, it was laid on my heart last year to throw my name in the hat, mm-hmm. uh, mainly because of things that I started to see in Douglas County, things I was hearing. Um, um, Stuff that was going on in the jails where some of the deputies were mentioned, you know, they felt like it was nepotism that existed. Um, they they weren't given fair chances and promotions or, you know, fair chances in moving up to different units if you weren't, you know, related or a part of a certain mm-hmm. family or a certain group. Like, yeah. um, they were kind of vague about, you know, the who, what, when, and where so, of, of those uh you know allegations, but they just wanted to see some change. They weren't saying it to, to like cause disruption, but more so to say, hey, we could use some new leadership. It'd be nice to, you know, um, be promoted. It'd be nice to move to another unit. You know, be on one of these specialized teams that some of these guys are on. Um, so that was like, okay, well maybe I'll throw my name in the hat and. You know, see what see what I can do. Well, well, they say, well, Mr. Fanny, we heard about a lot of stuff you do in the community. That's that's also a good attribute. You know, we would love to have you out here anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, why not? You know, put the uniform on and and leave Atlanta and come over to Douglas. And, and, and I'll definitely elaborate on some mm-hmm. of the nonprofits and what you do with the community um, in the program. Are there any policies in place right now, or um, you know, maybe programs that uh, Douglas County needs to improve on, or anything that you would implement? Um, I think. I've looked at a lot of the programs that they have. I think they just need to be enhanced a little bit more, and they need to be utilized um, to its capability. I think if uh, you bring somebody in that has the resources and the connections to uh, to bring those programs to life that they have, uh, as well as uh, kind of innovate them, kind of bring them up to speed. Does, does, does the sheriff, I, mean, I guess the sheriff's a constitutional officer in Douglas yeah. County, does he operate his own budget or is he uh, you know, just handed like a bowl of money and says, all right, this is all you can get? <laughs> uh, from, from well, the county, traditionally, you know, traditionally yeah. a sheriff would, uh, you know, um, they get uh, allocated a, a budget now. If they, um, and you, you should, the sheriff has to present all that when he, when he mm-hmm. does his, you know, his budget for the year. Um, during the fiscal year, they write up. Have you have any issues with the way the money is being spent? Um, you know, like too much in one place or not um, enough in one place, or is he over budget I, lot? Or I think that they could probably <clears throat> uh, revisit their uh, their. Uh, let me give a, a good word. Um, I think they could probably revisit their uh, strategy for how money is probably spent. Um, I think it could be be utilized in the needs of where that the taxpayer is establishing that they need uh, resources at. So if they're saying, like, good example, um, senior citizens, that's, like, one of the biggest, like, concerns. Um, maybe we can reallocate some some of the funds that we're using to things that we may not actually need or we may not even be utilizing. 
It's just kind of just sitting up at the sheriff's office and it's not being implemented mm-hmm. into the actual usage of what the sheriff, you know, sheriff's office use, use it, should be using it for. Um, maybe we can, you know, kind of just kind of, it's an old rule in, in budgeting when it comes to organizations and law enforcement. They say ask for a lot and spend less. And that is not a good you that's not a good strategy because you really need to count every penny of where you're gonna be putting money mm-hmm. in order in order to stretch it because once the budget there, yeah, it sounds like a lot of money, but by the time you get these invoices in and all these different procurements, you'll realize that that money shrink, 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 especially when it comes to supplies, tools, allotments, clo uh, you know, gear, firearms, um, and just maintenance and upkeep. Um, Shadir and Fanning, Fanning is our guest on this morning's Community Voice program. He uh, intends to qualify. It's next month. I mean, it's like the first week of March, right, when qualifying starts? Yes. Uh, he does not He does plan to uh, qualify to run for sheriff of Douglas County in that seat uh, currently held by Tim Pounds. Uh, if you have any questions or comments this morning, feel free to post those to our Facebook page, and I'll take a look at those and, and share them with our guest. Otherwise, you just can get whatever, um, you know, whatever comes out of my face <laughs> during this program. Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Oak Mountain Academy is an innovative school of academic excellence celebrating over 61 years. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to join us on the mountain to see our mission and vision in action. Academic excellence, a faith-based environment, and dynamic opportunities are just a few of the reasons our families choose Oak Mountain Academy. Academic scholarships and tuition assistance are available. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. All right, time right now is uh, 842. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. We're also streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. And this morning we are on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. Here is a question from a okay. Douglas County resident. Uh, she says, with several homeless camps in Douglas County, what would you do to um, help home these people and remove the camps? Yeah, so um, we'll just bring the HOPE initiative here. Um, that's something I did notice too. Um, that's actually somebody asked me that like yesterday about the um, the homelessness in certain areas. Same person was a cute blonde girl that asked you. Might have been. No, <laughs> no uh, we, was, we was at a senior seniors. Um, um, it was kind of like a Valentine, but Black History um, gathering. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. So, but to answer your question. Um, we would bring um, the HOPE program strategy here, um, add it to the sheriff's office, which I plan on doing on my 180-day initiative. Um, pretty much uh, what that does is uh, it allocates resources to them. So are they, are they like homeless, homeless on the street, or are they homeless where they just need somewhere to stay for the night because something happened? Maybe they got evicted and they've been out on the street for like the, a week. Can we you know, fund to house them in a hotel until we're able to get them signed up into a program? Or is it a domestic violence situation? Reason why they're homeless? Can we advocate uh, with with some of our uh, women and children resources to expedite maybe like you know uh, assistant living for them or a shelter for all women and kids? Um, so the that particular hope program brings in all entities of homelessness, and if they're just homeless because they've been you know you have that that known. One person that they're like, oh, they've been out there for years. We we bring them food, mm-hmm. you know. Sometimes we have to. Those are tough um, to deal with because you can um, provide them with resources, and they just prefer to be out at, at the location where they're at. So uh, we do we do work with like sanitation department to kind of clean up the encampments. Um, you have to give them, you know, by law, and most most counties you have to give them fair warning that. 
you will be evacuating, you know, the urban camping area mm -hmm. where the um, where station. But, you know, that that's actually part of my 180 day initiative is to bring in those resources to bring in the cleanup, the streets for the urban camping and also allocate um because I'm realizing a lot of females that have been through domestic situations where they was out of state and they moved in with their, their mm -hmm. boyfriend and mom and family really don't have and that. Deep, serve, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're they're out living mm -hmm. in and out of, you know, these women's shelters, but also on the street. So um, I plan on bringing that in. Well, uh, I want to hear more about your 180-day initiative. Now, yes. that, that is six months, if you do your yeah. math. Uh, it, what else do you have in there? Uh, crime decrease, um, decreasing in crime. Um we have a auto theft, uh, auto uh, inner and auto problem here. Um, we have uh, car break-ins, larcenies. Um, we're going to be targeting those uh, areas, doing a lot more um, cobra, cobra uh, undercover operations, mm -hmm. where we're going to be implementing um, what we call spotting. Spotting is going to be basically, um, you know, have sitting UCs in these areas, um, running more uh, jurisdictional. Uh, um, initiatives for crime, so we'll uh, nearby neighbors. We'll Douglasville, you know, Winston, um, Austell, Villarica, asking them to participate. And what I like to call my roll of thunders, uh, roll of thunders is pretty much where we start from where their hot spot is, all the way down to the the last jurisdiction hot spot, mm -hmm. and we we ta we we target real crime, we target real criminals, and um, get them off our street so we can all be safe. Shadaren Fanning, our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program, going to run for a sheriff in uh, Douglas County, kind enough to come over and, and talk about his campaign with us uh, this morning. How many uh, sheriff's deputies are in Douglas County? Um, <clears throat> should Would be, be under your guidance as a sheriff. It should it should be over a hundred, but you know every department has been short staffed. So I would I would probably say the sheriff's sheriff's office maybe staffed with maybe one hundred twenty. Mm -hmm. um, how can we how can we make up for that that you know because I mean I think everybody's struggling. You know, Harrelson County is struggling with you know, uh, maintaining Carroll County is struggling. You know, meeting what they want. I mean, they're always like you know maybe ten short. Yeah. I mean, how, how do you improve that? That's actually part of my hundred day initiative, one hundred eighty day initiative <clears throat> too. Um, I plan on retention is always the biggest because when people are not happy, uh, one thing that was always taught to me in, in leadership uh, in executive leadership is that um, money does keep people in certain places, but so, so do where they enjoy working. People will stay even if the, the money is not the idea of what they want to make. Um, ideally, I want to be a millionaire, but you mm -hmm. know, also I'll stay in a career that I love that doesn't pay me a million dollars. So the, that theory also works in retention, um, where if they enjoy where they're at, you know, more likely they will stay. But also um, in the 100 Day Initiative, I want to open up a, a, a bigger pool of um, of extra jobs that they're allotted, allotted to work. So, I'm ex, you know, I'm going to extend their distance where they can go and work mm -hmm. and allot them. Uh, like we got the World Cup that's getting ready to come up in two years. So why not why why not our deputies make you know make some of that good money? Would they still have to be full time with you though at that same time? Because yeah. you just worry about you know overworking somebody or being tired because the last person you want yeah. to be sleepy is. Well, it won't be forced. It'd be optional, mm -hmm. and um, also too, we'll keep working toward uh, case studies. So case studies, a lot of people don't understand that case studies is what gets raises, and as the population grows in Douglas County, we should be working day by day looking at case studies from my near near jurisdictions with perf with uh, other departments in other states seeing okay if this is the number of population for your county um and this is where the 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 salary wages are then maybe we can afford to push our raise up a little bit higher for our deputies based on um their case studies that they're they're turning in for their raises for the for the state to approve how much does a deputy in Douglas County make? Uh, they just got a raise, mm -hmm. so I think they start off about fifty-five, sixty an hour, depending on their experience, mm -hmm. up to seventy. Do you um, think that? Do you think that's adequate? Is that um, consider Douglas County? I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I guess just looking at it blankly, I'd say there's more crime in Douglas County. Yeah, there's more crime in Douglas County. It's not enough. By the time they take money out of your pension for mm -hmm. your pension, medical. You're still back down to about fifty, forty, forty thousand a year, 
if, and that's if you're not working, you know, extra jobs, which Douglas County does not, they don't have a lot of, uh, they have a few, but they don't have a lot of windows of opportunity to earn extra money mm-hmm. uh, with that same uniform. So um, th- that goes back to the retention plan. You're more likely to stay in that uniform if you're able to keep your uniform on and go make some extra money too before work or after work or on your off day. You may say, hey, you know, this is an easy job. They just want us to kind of help out with traffic or they just may want us to, you know, be in front of the building. They're paying $65 an hour, $70 an hour. So I want to open them up to the, the extra job pool that offers that bigger amount to them and not just just a extra job. Make it worth their while by opening that pool up where they can go to other jurisdictions um, to make that that amount. Is there any training or certifications um, that are out there right now that, um, uh, that maybe are not being – offered or taken advantage of in the Douglas County Sheriff's Office that you would put an emphasis on? Yeah, first uh, we need to do the mm-hmm. um, the, the incident uh, command system training, the mm-hmm. ICS. It used to be called NIMS. Um, if we have a natural disaster right now, we have a, a massive um, a mass shooting somewhere. We're not prepared for it because we, we haven't had the training for it. Um, most departments are now gearing up, sending their commanders to the incident command training. Um, we we need um, more active shooter training, not just bare minimum um, training that you typically could get through mandate, where they teach you how to clear clear a room or clear a school. We need the actual training that's implemented um, for active shooters. So um, in Atlanta, we have what's called TFOs. I plan on uh, adopting a TFO program and bringing it to Douglas County, which stands for a Tactical Field Operator. Mm. Um, they respond to active shooters uh, before uh, before anybody else does. And the purpose of it is um, you have to wait on SWAT for a lot of stuff, right? So by the time SWAT gets there, you know, casualties ever up, you know, and then maybe the suspect's gone. But if we can train most of our deputies to be certified as TFOs and also give them incentive to for doing it, which is, a, you know, a pay, pay raise incentive uh, for being part of the TFO program, um, that it will allow them to be right there in the area to respond and also um, be able to um, 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 obstruct the the possibility of mass casualties at, at a school or at a home or in a neighborhood. This show's zipping on Bob. we got like seven minutes left. I'm, I'm, let me ask you this one question before we go to our last break. Douglas County School System, do they have their own police department? They do. Do they, How do you feel about that? I mean, I, I, I just wonder about, you know, communication. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, how, how, the, how would a sheriff feel about that? Would, they have that over in Harrelson County, too. Yeah, cross-training definitely needs to exist <laughs> when, it becomes, when it comes that close with jurisdiction because certain school police can't handle certain um, incidents. So um, there should be a relationship, and that's something I don't see in the, in the, uh, with Douglas County Sheriff's Office. They don't have a lot of relationships with their nearby jurisdictions or nearby uh, law enforcement agencies. Uh, again, time right now is uh, 8.53. We'll take our final break and come back and uh, conclude our conversation with Shadarin Fanning. He's a candidate for uh, uh, sheriff in Harrelson County. Uh, we'll come back. We'll talk about you're, you're involved with a lot of nonprofits, and I think you actually hit up a nonprofit, too. We'll, yes, sir. All right, we'll talk about that after uh, we come back from this break. Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. The AP Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined advanced placement curriculum track to earn a series of distinctions upon graduation. This journey enables academically prepared students to pursue college-level studies throughout 17 AP courses in five subject categories while enrolled at OMA. I'm Patrick Uran, Head of School, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve.
855, welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice. My name is Colin Worthington. My guest this morning, candidate for sheriff in Douglas County, Shadaren Fanning. And uh, we're going to wrap up our uh, program here. Eight-year resident um, of Douglas County. That question was on our Facebook, so I wanted to share that information. But five minutes, uh, and I'm sure we could talk about this for a half hour, just uh, your nonprofit, the nonprofit that you have started. You can yes, talk sir. about that a little bit. Are you going to be able to maintain yeah. that as sheriff? Yes, I, 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 plan, it more yeah, I plan on implementing it more. We actually uh, uh, partner with LA Fitness here in, off Chapel. We do health and wellness. Um, actually, uh, uh, Sergeant Dean and Chief Sparks have supported uh, uh, our mental health and wellness day by showing up, and participating in the uh, the uh, uh, exercise uh, that we uh, we host there. Um, also, the Douglas County Youth Innovation Center. We do a lot of mentorship. We'll actually, be there tomorrow um, to speak to the kids about gang violence and uh, drugs. So uh, we're still active. We're still rolling. Um, I, it has slowed down a little bit since the campaign, but I, I plan on picking it up after uh, I win primary on May 21st. And, and to think about Douglas County is kind of the opposite of uh, Carroll County. Douglas County, uh, the Democrats, the, the Democrats, that primary is over. I yes. mean, it, you don't have a general election typically. Yes. Right. And it, we're here, Republicans all in the primary. We don't have a, a general election in November for, for much of our uh, races. Uh, are there any debates planned in Douglas County, anything like uh, that? We have one coming up with the NAACP. We had one last mm-hmm. week with the uh, women of Douglasville. Uh, we it was two out of three candidates that came to that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, how important is it for you to have a relationship with the sheriff in Carroll County and communication, good communication? It's, it's very important. You need your nearby mm-hmm. neighbor jurisdictions. Honestly, you need as many as agencies you can for for multiple reasons. Best practice. What are y'all doing? And if it's good, should we adopt it? If it's something that we're both doing, you know, that's not working, can we go somewhere else together and figure out? What are these other departments doing so we can adopt what they're doing and bring it up? It's all about best practice. It's not about the way we've been doing it or this is the way it is in this county. It's about what is best practice. And um, working with Carrollton, working with, you know, Cobb, or working with, you know, Fulton is all about resources. Something happens in Douglas County, which we're not prepared for right now um, because we don't have the, the training mm-hmm. at the moment. At the moment. The most updated training, we're going to have to depend on our nearby jurisdictions to, for help. And it's and not going like to depend on us. Yeah, if something happens in Douglas County, uh, yeah. you know, you're just not going to stop at the line. I mean, you, you yeah, you're going to have to call all, all, all cavalry's <laughs> on deck uh, at that point. Do you, you have any uh, website, uh, contact information? How are you talking to people? And, if, you know, if I didn't touch on a question that somebody else wants to know, how yeah. are they getting in touch Facebook, with Instagram is pretty much my first and last name. If you can pronounce that long name, Shadarian yeah. Fannin. Um, and mm-hmm. uh, TikTok is elect, uh, I believe is elect Shadarian Fannin. Um, are you I'll, doing TikTok videos on there? I'm trying to do. Are you dancing try- and singing for 30 seconds? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't got that part down, no. but I'm I'm putting added music. I'm just learning how to add music to my TikTok. Well, your campaign manager can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's good at it. Yeah, she's absolutely. good at all that stuff. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. It was good to meet you. Thank yes, you sir. for coming out and uh, appreciate talking to you a little bit. I mean, it, I mean like gang, your gang experience. I mean, a lot of things we could have talked about for two hours. Yes, but sir. I'm glad we got that in. And again, if you want to get more information on uh, Shadaren Fanning, I encourage you to uh, look at uh, all those social media websites. Time right now is uh, 8.59. We'll uh, try to think of my guest is tomorrow. Oh, yeah, the Harrelson County Development Authority. We also have uh, Harrelson County Chairman Ronnie Ridley on the program tomorrow morning at 8.30. So hope you tune in for that. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, everybody. Thanks.